One growing area of research and debate in global citizenship involves the right of citizenship of non-humans. In the majority of nations, non-humans such as animals are considered as property. As a result, these non-humans cannot independently exercise rights. There are thinkers, philosophers, and activists who are changing this reality by advocating for rights for non-humans, particularly animal rights. A legal person is not the same as a natural person. A natural person is a living and breathing individual. A legal person can be a physical human being, but the law also recognizes some forms of entities as legal persons. The non-human legal personhood is in itself a fiction created by law to allow individuals to gather as collective bodies or entities in order to carry out an activity. For example, you and I may want to work together to sell a product or to provide a service, a service like financial advising. In such cases, the law creates a legal person to allow those activities to take place. Businesses and other corporate entities are legal persons before the law. Legal personhood permits business transactions. Legal persons also enjoy legal standing in juridical matters. They can file a lawsuit. They can be awarded compensation. They can seek to enjoin an individual or another legal entity from violating their legal rights. Imagine then if animals or other non-humans were granted legal personhood. They would be able to take action in cases of abuse or abandonment. Attempts to have courts declare animals as legal persons has been successful. Take the case in India in 2019, where the Punjab and Haryana High Court in India said, and I quote, there is nothing inherent in the concept of legal personality that prevents its extension to animals, unquote. Many people celebrate that very bold declaration by the court. This animal law enthusiast, a Canadian animal law attorney, said it was progress and it was huge. The people supporting legal personhood, like Rebecca Brader, emphasize that the planet is shared space with existences among the species that are indissociable. But there are also arguments that the declaration by India's High Court was actually welfareist. Welfareist is a reference to the human tendency to exercise a paternalistic type of care for other species. Welfareism decries this protective system that seeks to mitigate harm rather than truly liberate and grant animals genuine subjectivity. For critics of the legal personality approach, welfareism is the same as speciesism. That is to say, it's the belief that the human species is better than or more deserving of privileges and rights than other species. These critics point to another part of this Punjab and Haryana High Court judgment, a part where the court states that humans will act as parents of the animals. They use the Latin phrase, in loco parentis. More specifically, the High Court states, and again, I quote, the entire animal kingdom, including avian and aquatic animals, are declared as legal entities having a distinct personality with corresponding rights, duties, and liabilities of a living person. 
All citizens throughout the state of Haryana are hereby declared persons in loco parentis as the human face for the welfare protection of animals. Live and let live, declares the court at the end of that quote. Critics note that most of these cases require some type of comparison between humans and animals where an argument is proffered to show that the animal approximates humans in its speech, communication, or intellectual capacity. For these critics, such comparisons are repugnant and do not advance the attack on speciesism and the radical change in structures necessary to bring it about. And you, where do you situate yourself in this debate? Is legal personality sufficient to recognize animals as equal global citizens, or is something more needed? Share your ideas in a comment to this video.